Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 506 being recorded on July 11th, 2018. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Alan Malventano. Sure you are. You're not just an imposter. We've found to replace you, eh? He showed back up and knocked on the door, so I felt obligated to open it. Mm. But they, I they was, changed and you mistake. regretted it. They changed the since. locks and the alarm codes and stuff on there. Yeah, I changed the locks. We have this unfortunate habit of leaving the front door open when we're here. Ugh, horrible mistake. Yeah. Came back in and just sat back down, started doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hey, did you bring Alan's fast back. food? Uh, did you eat fast food today? Hey, guys. Uh, what did you eat for lunch, guys? Went to Firehouse. 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 I, uh, that counts. Come on. I hadn't had it in That's a QSR. A month and a half. 46 days. 46 days. It's but been who? way more than 46 days. No, it was 46 days. <laughs> he was counting. <laughs> Not since Firehouse, but like I was gone for 45 days. And you know what? Every day was paradise that you were gone for me. <laughs> It's just for Josh every day, <laughs> but only because he was tracking you on Facebook. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Um, we didn't do one last week because it was Fourth of July, but here we are. It's the eleventh of July. One full week after that, um, we're going to talk about some hardware and some stuff. Not a whole lot of things happened. A whole lot of stuff is going to happen later in the summer, but not a whole lot mm-hmm. has happened uh, to this part in the summer. But let's get into what we did and talk about some fun and interesting things, maybe. Uh, starting with, hey, we live stream this. And you missed, you missed all of our discussion about beans and toast before the podcast recorded. And uh, you can make up for that by going to pcpro.com slash live. That's where we record it. Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and if you need a little reminder, we send out emails uh, to remind you. And all you need to do to sign up for that is go to pcpro.com slash subscribe. Ask for your name, your email address. We'll send you that information uh, as we get it. We do other live streams. We had one with AMD recently where we give away some hardware. Uh, we have another one coming up relatively soon with somebody else, which I won't mention yet. But with somebody. It will include hardware in there. I don't yeah. let anybody show up without, uh, without bringing hardware. But uh, we'll have that. We have our uh, Patreon campaign running. That is at patreon.com slash pcper. This is where you can go if you want to, um, you know, throw us a couple of bucks a month. Say, hey, good job on that podcast, dumb kids. And uh, we'll continue sitting in front of this table for you and talking about things, whether it be beans on toast or GPUs or what have you. And I think I – think this will all be much more exciting, you know, later in the summer, later in the uh, in the year. So you'll definitely want to be paying attention and, and contributing. If you have an ad blocker, if you think, uh, you know, it was a good idea to bring Alan back, you, you can become a patron there. If you don't think it was, please don't go away. You can't actually add negative money to the Patreon, I don't think. It's a shame. That would be a horrible bug if they did that. Um, but it's a regular recurring monthly contribution. It could be a dollar a month, three dollars, five, ten, twenty, fifty, whatever you want it to be. We greatly appreciate all of it. If you become or increase your patronage during the live stream of the podcast, I will read out your name uh, and thank you uh, for 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 doing that. So there's that. Uh, we also have uh, well, there's two mailbags since our last podcast. We have I hosted episode fifty. Um, I threatened to cancel the show after 50 episodes and I was going to have a funny haha joke and skip episode 51 but instead Josh did one as well uh, but Josh apparently measures it in nanometers so I always like that sure when do. you do it they have funny titles uh, you just must say more interesting things than I say I don't say many interesting things at all hmm. so, because uh, I was shipped off to a FEMA your, cab what was your answer on the when's Tom Peterson coming back wink wink question i said within the next eight months <laughs> it's pretty broad okay okay that's a good wink i appreciate that that's good watch him not actually come back uh, within the next eight months <laughs> <laughs> josh walworth is a liar yeah it's just about about new that's thing. what the comments already say so don't worry yeah <laughs> fair uh and then also of course <coughs> don't forget about our merch store where you can buy PC respective T-shirts and posters and mugs. That is at joshtech.com, J-O-S-H-T-E-K-K. Wait, have we got a link on the front page yet? Uh, I don't know I mean, if we probably do. Probably not. PC per? No. Well, but, I mean, let's be serious. If, if you're buying stuff with the Josh Tech Walrus logo, well, you're then obviously to this podcast. You're... 
Otherwise, you're you a crazy have person. Your life that nobody well, else can really. That's also true. Feel. That includes yeah. you buying one for yourself, by the way. That's that's because I'm a uh, I'm narcissistic, and um, technically, it was cheaper than a good mirror. I'm going to do every <laughs> podcast like this from now on. <laughs> It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, so you can get, uh, you know, this Josh Tech uh, poster or a Josh Tech T-shirt. I have. Did I? I don't. I didn't need to wear it. I'm the, did you? You bought one. Why don't you wear it no, every day? No, I bought a mug. Oh, you bought the mug. I, I bought a mug it, too. I, I use it every day. I'm not going to wear that around town. People give me like, what the hell's Josh Tech? <laughs> So you can explain to them. You can just carry the wheel with it you means. wherever you go. I am a superstar Big on ass. the internet. Get a big necklace and hang it from it you know, and walk around. To. I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's get into the reviews and whatnot. We'll skip through these reviews relatively quick because they're uh, light accessory-ish type items. First up, Sebastian posted a review of the HyperX Alloy Elite RGB mechanical keyboard. It is. Was he able to knock out his wife with a swift uh, swipe of, of the keyboard without it bending? No. Is that on your Did test you list? That, uh, that, what was <laughs> that film? It's uh, the first the movie. checkbox. It's, it's not on yours? <laughs> this is an, it's turned into an interesting discussion. I thought it was going to be a very quick one, but now we're going to have to dive into this one probably. Well, I mean, it comes with a keycap removal tool, but that's a much more efficient way to remove the keycaps. <laughs> to bang it against a person's skull? Like, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> What was that uh, film with Angelina Jolie wanted or something like that? Hackers? People who could, you know, <laughs> it was <spin> hackers. Hackers. <laughs> no, <laughs> not <laughs> hackers. Then I'm not interested. <laughs> Chris Pratt got Tomb Raider. Uh, got his teeth knocked out. I don't, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's Angelina no, it's Jolie's. wanted. Haunted. Chris Pratt was in Haunted. Wanted. Wanted. Huh. He was oh, in Wanted. Okay. I'm going alive. to send you. I know. I'm not going to click movie. on it. Don't I'm send it to me. I don't care. Say it. I don't care. Don't send it. Um, <laughs> the HyperX keyboard that we were talking about. Uh, is made of metal and has a nice weighty feel. There you go. So maybe you can use it for the, any of those illicit purposes. I prefer to use it for typing and things like it's that. Maybe gaming. Cherry MX as which, well. Which kind of Cherry MX? Uh, Red or blue. brown? So like oh, only blue or do you get a choice? Uh, There's a random as well. assortment on the Look keyboard. Look at how okay, scroll up, scroll up. Look at how skinny that thing is. Yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah. That's it is thinner than the. That's thin. Look at how way far. You can and, and plus you can see the undies. Under the. That's cast. true. That's true. Huh. Yeah. I mean that that appeals to a you know a certain. So uh. Slice. Where population. am I going to keep my snacks? Uh, it's a $60 premium for the RGB version of this keyboard. Uh, Sebastian very much uh, uh, liked it. $169 for the RGB, $109 for the version with a single color backlight. So that's a yeah, that's a pretty substantial difference there. Yeah, it's still kind of up there for the RGB Editor's version. Choice Award from him, he uses a lot of keyboards, so that's a good sign. Uh, check out that review if you want to check out the uh, the Hyper X alloy. Not a Kingston device. They, they've kind of completed that sub-brand. Oh, okay, red and brown are also available. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lee posted a review of the Seasonic Prime Ultra. This is the 750 watt titanium version. Um, we're, we're banging through these power supplies pretty regularly uh, just to see who's living up to the hype. And, and we've talked about Prime Titanium before. These are fully modular, you know, um, 80 plus titanium, which doesn't really mean anything anymore because 80 plus was meant to be an efficiency rating, but now 80 plus titanium is like, what, 96%, I think? Is that what that is? I da, ba, da, ba, da. I just remember. jumping through to it. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, it's in the 90s, yeah, 90% guys. at 100% load. It's 90% at 100% load? Okay. Yeah, 94 so at 50. So. It just basically means you're going to have higher, you have to have higher quality components to meet that goal. It's, it means you're more, it does mean you're more efficient. You're getting more power output for the power input uh, across that curve and across that range. We've had really good luck with the Seasonic uh, Prime series. This was their first attempt at digital power supplies as opposed to analog management power supplies. And uh, they were pretty much the last of the party with that. But because their analog ones were so good, nobody ever really complained about it. So now they're now they're in the world of the digital, uh, and they're apparently doing it very well. 12-year warranty. Yeah, that's kind of like the insane part of this. I, 
That's like that's like it breaks and you uh, it, bought it, a new one anyway because you just forgot that. It's oh yeah, for one. sure. How the hell did it last that long? You got I mean, seriously. You got to tape. What yeah. kind of uh, what kind of uh, fluid or, or poly stuff they got in there that that lasts twelve years that they're comfortable with? Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't even have underwear PFM. that old. Yeah. Don't lie. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. I won't. Just don't say anything else. There's no. So the 750 no. watt version. I mean, it, they're pricey, <laughs> but they're not stupid expensive. 750 watts for 179 dollars. It's right? not. It's not horrible for it's, a module. I feel. I feel like that's quite a bit down from what we're used to. Like if you want the thousand watt titanium, you're looking at 260. So um, that's that's a significant. That's a that's an 80 dollar jump for that 250 watt difference. Um, but the 650, 750 are are kind of in a more reasonable range. Did, this is another editor's choice award here. Um, fully modular. The only weakness was the operating temp. You know, is 40. It, it was rated at 40 C above 80 percent load. But again, I think most of our internal chassis are going to be below 40 C. Should be. I hope so. Or you're doing something wrong. Don't do that. Uh, so check out that review. Or it's summer for in a, Ontario. Well, to, to turn on the in AC. In which case, dog. your room temperature is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris posted a review of the Flexa Spot Riser, which is um, maybe not intuitively named. It is a uh, it, 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 riser. An add-on, yeah. But that's like, it's a supplement to your current desk to make it a standing desk. Yeah. essentially, you right? You built one of those once. Yeah, out of IKEA furniture. Yeah. And it was not. Um, it didn't go up or down. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, it was just fixed. If you wanted to move, remove it, you had to take all the monitors <laughs> off to the side so you could remove the table that you were set on top. Guess of Guess what? Desk. You never did. Yeah, never did that. Yeah. Never did that. Uh, this is, you know, um, size dependent, ranging from 199 to 349 bucks, just like in terms of the width you've got there. It's got 12 height settings. Uh, this this one is the largest of the set, I believe, uh, the 47 inches wide. Uh, and you can basically see how this works. Now, my my main question or concern about some of these is, in its most compressed state, like you see here, is that going to make the desk too tall? It might, but you can always just I guess no, you just usually. move the keyboard yeah, down. Yeah, just move the keyboard down, right? Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it ends up being the monitor and a stand for a couple of weeks. Um, actually, then after demanding actually, these things actually, for months, you can see what it has there. You uh, oh the keyboard no. is lower so yeah, the, the keyboard, keyboard becomes yeah. flush with the table. Yeah, okay, I okay. see it. I see it now. Nah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean no, I've seen you know, these things fine. before. People demand them, and after two weeks, they end up in the storage room because they hate them. Why do they hate them? Because standing at a desk for four hour to eight hours a day isn't as fun as it sounds. But the that's idea is you, you go, it. you just sit your ass back down when you're tired of it, right? Right. Yeah, when you have a standing it's desk. It's been up. It was up the first week you owned it. Well. Yep. When I had it at the other office, <laughs> I used it quite a bit. And when we moved true. here, that's true. I, I don't know. Things got rearranged, and yes, it's. I don't know if it's ever been at a higher state than it is. I don't think I've even uh, arranged the cables so that they could go higher. I'd no, have to. That's probably I'd what be the very careful is. with that. Um, but I, I still think that the idea of having a standing desk is good. This one is not powered. This is, uh, you know, you you pull out a pen, lift up. Oh, close so you have the pen. to you have to like support. I believe there's a little bit of a counterweight to it, so it's not. Oh, okay. Not quite as big of a deal. Yeah, you grab the paddle and you just kind of lift up and. Oh well, that's yeah, not. It's got gas shocks in it. Looks like. Yeah. So uh, Chris did a really good review of this. It's it's definitely a unique thing. I think it's something more people should look into. It's definitely a lot cheaper than getting, even even like that IKEA like this t this desk around here is an IKEA uh, powered thing. And what is this? Like a five hundred dollar, six hundred dollar yeah. table or something like that, you know? Yeah. For all that for the motorized version. And we do use it on the set more often than anything else. That's that's beneficial. But um uh hey, for your health, Josh, I think you should look into this. There, yeah, there is a benefit even, to these even, Josh. Uh, what's that? So when you're at work and you've got that wonderful person who demands help and then refuses to move from their chair. You don't have to lean over them. You just pull the pin out, raise it up, click it in, do your work, and then walk away. The looks on their faces are absolutely priceless. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I buy the nose. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Wyoming internet strikes again. It does. It does. That's a pretty good freeze frame for Josh. Um, I'm sure he'll come back to us. 
Next on the review list, Chris also posted a review of the Sennheiser GSP 600 gaming headset. Sennheiser's been doing like gaming headsets for at least a couple of years now, right? Or is this relatively yeah. new for them? And it, it's still yeah. relatively new yeah, for it them, is still but, relatively they, but they've been doing a lot of them. These are, these are pricey, $250, um, but they come with the name that I think people yeah. um, Sennheiser at is least like, give the benefit of the doubt of this is going to be the better uh, sound quality that we're going to get mm -hmm. out of this. They look pretty comfortable as well. Look at the construction. Josh has called in from his 28K modem, 28.8K <laughs> modem. Did it sound good? It sounds amazing. Josh, One you day need to get ISDN in Josh, Wyoming. <laughs> Josh, you need to close that uh, vocal tech internet phone program you're using. Right. It's, maybe maybe we hang up my, on him. What we, are my children doing? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> He wants to know what, what his children are going to use the bandwidth. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're abusing You should the get a QoS router or something and, you know. Yeah. Go, I'm going to go check it out. Quality service. All out. right. Yeah, sounds great. Hey, All bye. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's going great so far. Um, that was like one of those... One of those calls into the screensavers. Quality <laughs> Net <-cam> network. <laughs> yeah. I used to do those. I would call oh, in. Call her, my call her, can you move away from the television, please? While I had my 240 by... Yeah. 320 uh, by 200. 320 by 240, 4 by 3 webcam. Going on yeah. there. The tech TV webcam network. Yep. Is whatever it was called. Um, wow. So, so some of you audio guys will have to help me on some of this. Impedance, 28 ohms. Worth noting? I mean, eh, it's impedance. Not really. Not yeah, really. It's the same yeah. pair of headphones yeah. for the uh, most part. It has two 3.5 millimeter three poles, one 3.5 uh, millimeter four pole. Well, the four pole is good for if you're trying to plug it into a telephone. Right. Uh, right. A telephone. <laughs> telephone. <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not an iPhone. But correct. Well, well it depends cool on what standard they implement. Do they implement the iPhone one or do they implement the other one? <laughs> the one the that rest works to everything them. else. The rest of As them. It. Yeah, the pinouts are different. Yes, they are. Really? Uh -huh. Because Apple. Well, I think Apple well, I did it first. I don't know. I could be wrong on that well. one. Huh. Anyway. Um. The padding he calls phenomenal phenomenal on these have a suede like material mm. um which is good uh they they're not active noise canceling but they do apparently block out a lot of that outside noise good seal on there uh maybe don't wear them if you have kids running around the house or something or maybe um, wear them will, if you have you kids running around the house. soon after that life is bad because your house is on fire but you couldn't hear anything I don't That's think okay, it prevents you not from hearing healing, screaming feeling sometimes heat. is worth it. Or exactly. So, so what were your kids doing, Josh? I have no idea. They wouldn't mm. admit to anything. So. <laughs> um, so these headphones don't have any of the kind of artificial surround sound, um, but they do have, a, according to Chris here, wider than average soundstage uh, for a closed back headset. Uh, 10 to 30 kilohertz. Yeah, they they over over kind of provision the sound you know what i'm saying no a little overcompensation well, okay so basically it's pretty you hard don't to get the drop off you okay you know how usually you get if you go from 20 to 20k you get the drop off at the ends of the spectrum pretty significantly correct yeah well mm -hmm. they've expanded that out to the higher levels so the drop off actually exist outside of what is normally considered human hearing. Yeah, but I mean, usually the reason there is a drop-off is just like physical limits of the drivers and stuff. E exactly. So, and to, so to, they're using a different driver technology to be able to expand that out so you don't get the drop-offs. Yeah, and that's a very wide range, especially at the low it's end. It's extremely wide range. Yeah, 10 hertz is crazy low base response. I mean, you got to think that, that it's uh, the, the, the how the driver moves at, at 10 hertz. Because if you know how, you know, you like, like 10 sound times a waves work and then <laughs> and, <laughs> anyway, you know, no. Uh, yeah, so the microphone like, yeah. apparently was very good quality on this. Uh, something that previous Sennheiser ones have done as well. Something you would expect from them. Uh, I would hope boot. so. Yeah. Um, because 
I hate to say it, like a lot of the other headsets that I've tried personally, the mic has just been crap. You just talking about other gaming headsets? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He mentioned specifically that it's preserving natural base of voice, unlike most, unlike most gaming headsets, which do have a lot of uh, tinny sound of sound. To yeah, them they sound like Josh did a few minutes ago, usually. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I call it the twenty eight K filter. Yeah. So, uh, two hundred forty nine bucks though, still pretty, still pretty expensive in the in, in the in the grand scheme of things. But check out that review of the Sennheiser GSP six hundred, if you will. That is definitely up there for price. Uh, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. All right, so we're gonna About, jump into uh, mid range Grado non gaming headphone. Mm -hmm. it's, well, before, interestingly enough, it's the same sorry. price as Sennheiser's broadcast headset, the HMD two eighties. But that gets you an XLR interface, which then you have to deal with. Yeah, which is right. another yeah. hundred bucks. About so, right? Yeah, the XLR to to USB. Yeah. Does this look like that headset as well? No, no, no it doesn't. Not nothing it's like not it. the same okay. at all. Uh, before we get into our, our sets of news items here, worth noting, of course, that Edward is a Edward Jang, new pledge five dollars and ninety nine cents. Five ninety nine. Thank you. That's very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. All right, news items. Microsoft released a new Surface, the Surface Go. It's okay. a smaller Surface. It looks like the kickstand opens even further. Uh, I think it's the same as the latest <laughs> Surface Pro or Surface, uh, Surface Eventually, Pro Eventually, it's just going to flap all the way over to the other side, sure. and you can just close it whichever yeah. way you want. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's you know what I'm always that. saying about that, though? No. I ain't getting up till the kickstand goes down. I what? I Never mind. Don't, I don't even. Just don't go there. Oof. Alan, one day you'll get there. Knows, <laughs> but you know. All right, so this is a 10-inch tablet. Uh, so it's smaller than the Surface Pro. It's got a really low-cost uh, starting price of $399, but that's with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC. Uh, and they're also using an Intel Pentium Gold processor, otherwise known as Gold Celeron, I believe, before. Uh, Adam. Adam. Yep. This it's was an Adam. Adam. Okay. Right. It's apparently like the one step down from the Core M lineup. Okay. So it's like a Core M.9. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The uh, um, If you want 8 gigs of RAM, uh, you want if you jump up to 128 gigs or more, you actually get an NVMe SSD instead of eMMC. No one should buy the cheap one. Despite the fact that these are all um, acronyms, those are very important ones. eMMC is bad. Yep. NVMe is good. Yep. Even if it's slow, NVMe still be better good. than still better than EMMC. Yeah, uh, and four gigs of RAM is also bad, and I would highly recommend uh, eight gigs of RAM for that as well. But there's no processor upgrade on this; it's all the same. Uh, Correct. Pentium Gold, which is nice that you get the because there were rumors of having a Pentium Silver on the low end, so at okay. least they aren't screwing you with the processor. But to upgrade all that, you're over six hundred bucks, right? So you get rid of that three ninety nine starting point. So it's so it's and that's not even counting the uh, hundred dollars for the. Pen? Keyboard cover. No, that is. It's like six fifty oh, with the keyboard cover. I think. Oh yeah. You're right. Okay. It's yeah. it's five fifty without any of the keyboard stuff, I think. Yeah. Okay. So there so there's that. This is mainly meant as a, you can kind of see in this picture here a comparison of the Surface Pro to the Surface Go. There's a significant size difference there. Um, and this is kind of targeting iPad, iPad Pro, um, education. Um, highly mobile users. They, they've said they're going to release an LTE version later in the year, but this one is not enabled for LTE. Uh, Microsoft, the Surface line, had no real competitor to the iPad. Now they, they have one, both kind of in price point. Um, I think it's actually a really interesting, compelling story to compare it to something like the iPad if you're a student, right? I would look at it as there is there's the young education student that is probably better off with an iPad because of the simplicity of use. They're mm -hmm. not doing like papers. They're not doing research on Wikipedia, things like that. But then you get into like middle school and above where, hey, you need to type. You need to write things. You need to be able to communicate, maybe use different apps um, that the Windows environment is going to be better suited for. You know, th this is where Chromebooks have really been uh, 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 beneficial. And so this kind of goes directly after that after that space. So I think high school kid, middle school kid, you know, college kid, this is where um, Microsoft's kind of attachment is going to be. And the Chromebooks have kind of been creeping up in price like, oh, yeah. over time. Yeah, so if anything, this 
to try to know. get b better build qualities and stuff. They, yeah. They've been doing that with Chromebooks. Um, and, you know, these ship with, in Windows 10 S, but you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free. No, home. Uh, oh, home, Windows home. 10 Home. Yeah. By Pro, I just meant full. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> they, you can run non-Windows Store apps on it for free. You don't have to pay for that upgrade. Uh, it's a little bit interesting that they, you know, they went with that Pentium Gold processor. Um, I believe in a there was a video where they did a quote. And what was the quote on this, Ken? It was like, for reliable or predictable. predictable performance. As if the silver is not predictable? No, um, I was more in reference to like a Qualcomm part. Oh. Right, so if you look at... Uh, the always connected, always on PCs from Asus and and HP and yeah. uh, Lenovo. They are they're they're definitely lower performance, but they have better battery life uh, and then the LTE connectivity. You know, as as part of that whole package. And in here, they don't really have that. Uh, the battery life on this is good, but not great. I think they quote nine hours of battery life for video viewing, which yeah, is not not great, not fantastic. Um, and of course, this verse story doesn't mention battery one time, so there's that. Um, so you know, it's a little bit disappointing for that, but it, it's clear to me that like my gut says that Microsoft probably had a phone call coming, but they had both of these platforms being evaluated, right? And and they ended up going with the Pentium. And it all comes down to my guess is the the compatibility issue, right? They didn't want people to have questions about what apps worked and what didn't. So until that gets figured out, uh, and or if it is performance based, well, I mean, I guess those two things are related because if you run an emulation mode, things are going to be slower. Mm -hmm. But on Pentium, you know, the Pentium Gold, even though it is a low performance, low power, low cost part, you don't have to run an emulation mode. So yeah, be interesting to see like what the performance difference is between yeah. an 835 or 845 powered machine and this Pentium Gold. I agree. I agree. Not really a way you can evaluate that though. Um, effectively, I mean, if we if we start if we can run some Windows Store apps, <laughs> you know, my favorite apps. Yeah. Uh, and figure that out. And then you do an evaluation of like how far behind is the Qualcomm part when you have to emulate something, right? I, I think it's it's gonna it would be an interesting story. These are shipping in early August. Um, but for me to me the value with, without the cellular connectivity it loses a little bit of its value, mm -hmm. right? And because of the loss of the battery life advantage. But but it will be available with an LTE modem option Yeah, but eventually. later in the year. I'm just yeah. talking about, like, if, I, if I'm looking at this in August, yeah. um, the, I, you know, I still want to get one in and try it out, but I feel like the the Asus Novago that had such phenomenal battery life while I was using it, you know, in day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. I, I think I would miss that. Like, if I'm sacrificing to go to lower performance already, which the Pentium Gold will be compared to anything else I've ever used, um, I would at least like to get battery life out of it. If nothing else, so 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 it'll stay on for all that extra time it's going to take you to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's I mean, yes. To, yes. <laughs> Joking aside, yes, that's true. <laughs> but also, it's just like if I'm just sitting there like browsing things, yeah. And just just stay on longer. That seems like a reasonable request. Uh, let's talk about the BioStar SSDs. Tim wrote this up. They announced the budget M500 NVMe SSDs. Uh, they have an LED on them. Uh, LED yeah. indicator. Of course they do. Yeah. So I would call this functional lighting. We've been yes. waiting for a drive indicator light on SSDs for a long time. Yes. Which is nice that it has one. It's got a heat sink solution. It's uh, got a 2x perf increase. I assume they're talking about over SATA. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's only a by 2 drive. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, so NVMe 1.2 plus by 2. I mean, it's we don't know what controller is supposed to be in there, but it's probably Fizon. It has a temperature display. Green if it's cool, yellow if it's standard, and red if it's heat. <laughs> standard. I don't know what that I don't know what that means. I'd like a little bit more definition about that. But the access light, I'm at least glad to see. Uh, pricing wise, one terabyte two sixty nine. So, you know, twenty six cents a gig. Yeah. Not not too bad. Uh, yeah, and twenty eight cents a gig for the five hundred and twelve gig model. But whatever the case, this is just it's gonna be using your complete stock firmware provided by the controller, you know, maker, whoever the controller maker is. Yeah. Whereas most yeah, of the other slow. most of the other guys uh, like turn some of the knobs and switches in the firmware to kind of tune it a yeah. little bit before they ship. Uh, these guys are probably just like slapping it together. Oh yeah. 
I mean, put an LED on it. This is yeah, yeah. Biostar's first SSD. This is no. a motherboard. Mm, no, no, no. I think they made that. Oh, first M.2 SSD, maybe. Yeah, that I'd buy. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, no, first PCIe I mean, I SSD. Buy it. Okay. And the thing on there is more right. like a heat spreader than a heat sink. It's just you know kind of like a cover, but that's good because it'll just help spread the heat with a light in it. Well, I know it's got light, Thank you. lights in it. It's they probably shouldn't have did in the marketing materials. They probably shouldn't have had the smart light as red for bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, if they're both green, that's boring. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. What do you do? That's an SSD. It's keyed. Oh, it's keyed by two, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. what the, the dual yeah. keying is. Yeah. I was thinking it's keyed SATA, but that's just by two. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, there you another go. Another SSD. Cheaper NVMe drives. I mean, because, you know, I've got this MSI board <clears throat> that has a big cover for the NVMe drives <laughs> that you put in there. Yeah. So you couldn't see it. It'd be <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Actually, that's a good question. If you had a motherboard that had a cover on the N.2, usually you can pop those off. Even uh, if it has an LED on it? No, the oh. LED would just be on the PCB. At, you think it's at, on the PCB, not like a little yeah, cable just, attached? I mean, no, some spreader. of the covers serve as the actual like hold down mechanism, like on Asus C370 boards. Like, no, he's talking about taking a pop off the yeah, cover you would pop that of off. the BioStar drive. Yeah. But order, if your SSD is still covered, then you won't be able to see the SSD. But then you'd see LEDs. some glow. No, you won't be able to awesome. see the. Yeah, there'll just be some glow coming from. Yeah, no, you still lose Ooh, the LED, underglow. but it'll fit at least. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. MSI <laughs> or, and Asus and or, all those guys have underglow on chipsets and motherboards. Double heatsink. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, if you stack double the heatsinks, heat sink. that's oh not. Oh my god. It's double heatsink. <laughs> no, <laughs> guys. Let's sing it together. It's a double heatsink <laughs> all the way. Come. No, let's not. Let's talk instead about the HTC Vive what does it Pro. Mean? Um, they're shipping the it today kit. for fourteen hundred dollars. Okay, so the full kit was Hooray. supposed to be like, hey, so you can only get the headset. You, you're gonna get the controllers and the beacons updated later. And thirty yeah, hours of the yes. masseuse. Well, guess what? The controllers are not updated. Updated. They're blue. <laughs> Ooh. But they're the same controllers. I don't know if they ever said the controllers did they, would be updated. Did they, have they said I don't remember the it same, would come with I don't Steam 2.0 trackers. I kept reading that everywhere. Like, you're, you know, you're, mm. the other components are there not going to be... There was conjecture that it would come with the Knuckles controllers, but I don't think they ever said it. Oh. No, it comes with the tails. Yeah. yeah. The worst. The beacons are nicer looking? They're more capable. And capable. you can use four of them instead of two. Oh, that's true. So there's true. that. Yeah. And they could... Yeah. Look, the, I mean, the real the real value here is the I resolution think, increase. I think their output is higher on the base stations because the range is higher. I believe you can go to a larger space. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. Like ten meters by ten meters. Twenty eight eighty by sixteen hundred is the new resolution of the screen. Um, it does have the audio built into the headset, which the previous Vive did not. Right? It has yeah. like headphones built onto the side of it. Now, kind of adds some weight to the thing. Like, I think this one's a little bit heavier. Then I believe that the sure. Gen One. So yeah, you can now go up to ten meet, like thirty-two by thirty-two feet. Uh, that's pretty of big. Space. Pretty big that's, area. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, it it's is fourteen hundred dollars. It is on Amazon. It's, it's too much money. Yeah, don't buy this. Yep. But is it maybe at the point here? Hey, if you're buying this, you're just in it, man. Like you're just you're just yeah. ate up VR. Like this is what all you you're playing? doing with your money, <laughs> huh? What are you playing? I, not Virtual much. masseuse. Not much, but you're playing it often and in a 32 by 32 space. <laughs> uh, I got to think about that. If I'm building a new house, I got to have a VR room. What a kind of idiot. I didn't even think about this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deck. yeah. What'd you say? Out on the deck? A hollow deck. No, a hollow, hollow deck. deck. Hollow <laughs> deck. <laughs> I was like, I gotta go outside. I was going to say, wintertime is going to be awesome for VR. <laughs> I'm only going to play Skyrim. <laughs> and only go to the cold mountain areas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, if you got a nice ice coating on the deck, you'll actually be able to walk in place. It'll work perfectly. Man, I just... I mean, how much is the full kit Gen 1 now? Three ninety nine, four ninety nine, something yeah. like that? Mm. I mean, what's... That's just ridiculous. But it's better. Yeah, do you want the it's better one or the, or the much, loser one? It's Alan? not that much better. It's not. It's it's, it's better. It's like, the, the screens a lot better, one. but, like, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, the screens are better, but they're not... It says Pro right on they're it. They're not $1,000 better. Yeah, no, I agree. Now, um, this doesn't come with the wireless uh, uh, 
thing that mounts on your head, oh, right? Oh, God, no. No, it doesn't. Okay. Is that still shipping from them? Or is it's that supposed ship- to ship this summer, I think. This summer yeah. still? They, I don't know if they've ever Man, announced the price. I just, every price. time something like this comes out, I go, you know what? Yeah, I want it. And then I go, no, nah. this, is, this is too much damn money. Like, I, I don't even want to hook it back up. Like, no, I'm not talking about buying it, but I'm just like, eh, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, budget cuts came out. Yeah, I should play the. Nah. It's a lot of hassle for a two hour yeah, experience. It turns out, like, it would take me two hours to reset up my Vive in this office than to play the game. We were supposed, that was supposed to be the VR area. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> now it's, now, now it's, it's a green, now storage. it's a green screen with the ladder in front of it. <laughs> Uh, it's got some. It's got some like plastic bins back there. The ladder would make for interesting VR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just clothesline yourself at I random. Just, did we have a story in here about uh, uh, Magic Leap? We didn't, so I'll just talk about the Magic Leap stuff. Or Magic Leap had a stream where they uh, announced that they were going to ship their Magic Leap Magic Leap One Creator Edition, which is their developer edition, uh, by the end of the summer, um, which is September twenty second. They didn't announce. They didn't. They did not announce price um, or specifics on that day. They showed a demo uh, that didn't look great. I mean, look. So Magic Leap was this company that has basically been built around amazing demo videos. Yeah. Not even. I, and I, I put demo well, in air quotes. Yeah, like they, they, they've been built around the idea that this is revolutionary, and everyone that everyone that uses but, it says it's. But they've put out some like. Some videos. They put out some concepts. Correct. It, yeah. They put out some videos. I didn't say captured videos. They put out some videos of like real. how it was working. I was like, holy crap, this is going to be amazing. But then it's been four years, right, since this company announced and yeah. and, and, and they've been developing stuff. It just so hasn't caught on. The majority of people at this point, I believe, thought, well, this is vaporware now. It's never really going to happen. So they've been doing these streams over the spring and summer, kind of like, hey, it's a real thing. Here's what it is. Here's what the belt pack is. Here's, what you, here's how dumb you look with the headset on because woof. If yeah. you thought you looked odd with the VR headset on, imagine looking that odd but being able to see everybody's faces when they look at you, right? That's the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, the demo was kind of neat. It was, it was actually really neat. Uh, 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 the one called Dodge where you you point it to a surface and uh, uh, like a golem comes out of the table or out of the couch, like busts out of the ground and like it uses the textures and it explodes the couch and this monster comes out and he throws rocks at you and you can either swat them away or you can uh, like dodge them and if you dodge it you can watch it go behind you and when it hits the wall it shatters right okay. so it's it's just it's cool stuff uh, but the the graphics were like not great and there was a little juddery in in places where like the tracking wasn't perfect um so that's not a great sign it, the other interesting news is it's powered by the nvidia tegra x2 which is this is the first time we've seen the Tegra X2 utilized outside of anything that was either a dev kit from NVIDIA and or a vehicle of some kind. Mm-hmm. Like Mercedes has announced something. Um, uh, Tesla is using it for, for like 2016 and beyond cars, I guess. And then what was the other? There was something else. Um, I mean, it, it's used for... It was automotive crap. Yeah, it's the right? Drive PX autonomous driving yeah, platform drive PX2. and some infotainment stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so this is actually like... It's kind of interesting because those are systems that can have high power consumption, right? This this device, in theory, that is on your belt, mounts to your belt, uh, and then has like the core that goes up the headset, doesn't have that kind of thermal headroom. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious what performance levels you're going to get out of it um, because there's a big clock speed range about where that GPU could go. It's got four Cortex-A57s, two uh, NVIDIA-designed Denver 2 cores. Thought we'd never see those again, huh, Josh? Um, and, yeah. and a 256 CUDA core Pascal GPU on it. So a pretty powerful system combination, uh, which you, you would kind of need. Um, but, yeah, it just it feels odd still. I, I wrote in a story that, that will go up later that I, I went from the it's never going to happen camp with Magic Leap to, okay, I'll try it on. Like, sure, yeah. give me a demo. I don't think it'll be great. I'll try it. But but yes, much like I was with Hololens, I, where I read and saw videos about Hololens for probably two years before I actually tried it, and it was kind of underwhelming. It was like, wow, this is really cool, but boy, would I never buy this um, <laughs> type of type of reaction to it. So I feel like we're in that same spot with uh, Magic Leap. But hey, maybe they're not just stealing everybody's money. So there's that. Well, what's uh, the point in that? Uh, I mean, legitimately, probably nothing. I mean, how many startups have you ever, you know, seen bilk? Take people's money? I think exactly. if you were going to bilk, I mean, it's the American you way. would have done it before four years. 
right? You would have closed the company t- two years ago and disappeared <laughs> into the into the forest uh, with your with your venture venture capital. Yeah, old star good. citizen now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But no, I'm but buying real nice. ships with that money, Jeremy. It's not. Real I'm, I'm investing ships. my thousands of dollars intelligently because when it comes out, uh, man, I'm going to be so far ahead of everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm going to be like a baron. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about the SD 7.0 spec. I don't know anything about this. It means I need to update my SD card article. As yeah, PCI finally. Express. What? Which begs the question Ooh. as to why do you need the SD part of it anymore? Yeah. Uh, especially when it breaks all the previous high speed SD. Uh, interfaces. Well, there, it's a breaking a change. Does uh, no, because the pin. It just doesn't friggin' work with UHS two or three. It uses the second pins that UHS two yeah. uses for yeah. PCI Express. So yeah, UHS two doesn't work. UHS one will still work. Yeah, meaning it's still backwards compatible. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just so you're not going to get the speed. Not boost. all the way though. Uh, you'll still get like 150 something microsecond. Yeah, out the of UHS the UHS one. UHS one. But if you put yeah. one of these in the UHS two reader, it probably won't work. Uh, I don't know. Is the spec final? Final? I mean, I mean, uh, I, I think so. If they, then so. have we finally broke it? Because the way know. the way that the pins, the extra pins on the UHS two work, you could, I think, theoretically make something that could go both ways. Like yeah. that could do UHS two speeds and could do uh, PCIe. Huh. Uh, but it's only one lane of PCIe, but it's three which begs the question, how hot's that damn card going to get? Because <laughs> um, it's a pretty small Will card. Will come with heat sinks? Do... Will we have to have a larger slot to uh, put them in? What about RGB LEDs? Yeah, yeah. Let's get some, <laughs> and what's let's get some edge questions? lighting on that. So am I looking at this right? Oh, okay. If you have an X, SD Express card and SD Express host, yeah. up to 985 megabytes per second. Yep, which is just you know 3.0 by 1. I mean, that's pretty impressive. It is. It is. You hope the transfer finishes before the factor. card catches on fire. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully it'll... To jump from 104 megs... Oh, wait. SD UHS 3 was up to 620 megs? Uh, that's... Um, this right here? That's if you're counting the reading and the writing. Full duplex. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's three, half that... 312. Each 312 reads yeah. in a so, SD card. Well, so, 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 Alan, if you look at that chart, SD Express with anything but an SD Express reader is limited to 150 or 104 megs a second. Exactly. So it falls back to basic SD. Oh, oh yeah. If you have the SD card that you can't buy and the SD Express <laughs> interface that you can't buy, is it ever fast? Hey, you got to make the standard before you can buy yeah. crap. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. What's I'm seeing SATA for? Express again. Phones? Well, but not that's even. a full size. You, you're not going to get that micro SD. Not yet. I'm, I'm so angry. <laughs> I can't plug my AM3 processor into my old AM2 motherboard. So there's there's kind of that's fair. There's kind of no. Two, yeah. That's wrong. You could do that. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's kind of two sets of limits that you deal with with the different SD. Like you go SD to SD HC. Like no. that changes other limits. Like there's logical limits. Like how much can you store? Okay. Right? So, like, SDXC can only do two terabytes. Yeah. Max. Not that we're there yet, but we're getting close. Like, I've got an SDXC card that's, like, a half a terabyte. Um, so, that's only a quarter of the max of the spec, right? So sure. So, w- one day, you're going to hit two terabytes, and that's your limit. You can't go bigger. So, the limit now for this format is 128 terabytes. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of storage to I go mean, away when your card overheats and melts. Biohazard going. mentions camera, like, you know, like high res video cameras in there. You know, oh, not, not even video, just just stills. But, but why don't do you need to transfer for 900 stills? megabytes per second? If of you're stills. cranking off 20 well, frames okay. a second, but, but a, a DSLR is not going to have a microcontroller capable of talking PCI Express. Well, there's that. Well, they they, uh, that. they could. Uh, they could. I'm that, doing that 5K video at I, 10 bit. I think the real deal and is... And 120 hertz. I, I don't think that's so much the issue because... Data it, centers. It, you know... The, well, racks and racks and racks of SD no, card readers no. and five and a quarter inch base. <laughs> so so having just been uh, taking a lot of pictures and trying to empty cards, like, in the evenings, yeah, right? But, but Like, that's... When you're emptying the card is when you care about the speed. Yes, it's the correct. Speed. Is that a euphemism, right? Alan? No. Because when you're in Europe and you're emptying the cards... 
that's really not Here's the thing, even like, a euphemism for we we get to this issue nobody. like so uh, you're at a gig a second. <laughs> First of all, what are you copying it to? What storage device yes, can you copy it to? Right. Well, and then, NVMe device. And then, no what's the capacity of that disk that you're storing to? How many? How many people are are gonna are gonna have? What did you say? This I'm one doing up to? thirty. How seconds, many terabytes? Really high end video. Uh, Ryan, did you forget who you're talking to? No, no. But like that doesn't mean it it's Alan. He's got eighty terabytes. <laughs> Who's gonna dump a four terabyte? Let's just say four terabyte. Who's gonna dump a four terabyte SD card yeah, of pictures? Yeah. Often. Six hundred forty k should be good enough for that, anybody. That's true. That's true. You can thank you. I Finally, mean, somebody who understands. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, yeah, you're I mean, right. the spec right. should exist. You're right. Make everything as fast as yeah. it can possibly go, and then everybody we'll figure, figure out, out what you do with it from there. I mean, and then they got the like, pieces of everything you know, you've destroyed. Yes, the, the host storage for these interfaces is not accelerating at as. Anywhere were, close to the speed of the interfaces. Uh, there were single days where I did like 100 gig worth of photos. Yeah, but for what? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you pour it on to? You can't possibly Because he's a masochist. He only gave him an hour. So there was a lot to document. On OC5. So you put it onto a USB 3.1 drive. Yes. Bottleneck. <laughs> yes, exactly. That would go slower <laughs> than like, the speed. Literally, you, you can't look at all the pictures you took. Well, I, I pair them You'll down after. You'll never see them. No, I think you've... No. <laughs> Apparently, it there's 54,000 you... pictures. It'll take you... I will never says. invite you to a slideshow. Don't go. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> this is the one of 30, so, so 30 that, fast, rapid shots of this one scene I took, just so I could get the this perfect This is Alan taking right, a second 30, bite right? of his cheesecake in I, I will, the I will tell you the, the, cafe. <laughs> the, the dangerous thing there was that whole 24 frames per second raw shooting of the yeah. RX-10 Mark IV. It's dumb. Well, if you're trying to it's get... It's great. If you're trying to get one if shot. If you're trying to get one good shot... Don't do it if you're touring and you're taking right. 150 pictures of a church. Right. right. <laughs> and it I turns out you don't need 150 times 24. And I wasn't doing it for that. But if we're like on a boat ride or something and everything's moving around and you're trying to get shots... And See, this like, is where... You know, this is where uh, the AI computing stuff comes into play. This is a totally Pick different issue. But like, <laughs> this is hey, where actual talent and photography no, comes no, no, along. No. So you actually <laughs> take the pictures that really mean something at the right time because right, that's no, no, a talent, that's, right? Yeah, yeah. Talent. Uh, nobody cares about talent and like being a good picture. You know, like being picture a good taker. Photographer, that's a good, a good picture. picture. A good <laughs> right. What we want is we want to take. We want to collect the most data possible, right? And then let. Some yeah. system determine what the best photos are. Yeah, that would be nice. And I think we'll, we're actually probably pretty close to there already. So there was. Well, like, actually, no, no. Hold on. I have like, um, <laughs> Disney filed a patent for this, <laughs> where they're going to get rid of their photographers throughout the throughout the park. To see security cameras. And they're going to have a robot that sits there and takes pictures, and then an AI system that determines which pictures have the most people smiling, which ones uh, can they yeah. augment so yeah. that you can take one from the other, and automatically create the best photos as a result, yeah. and then they present those to you. That's all we're doing. Alexa, Robots. what is the best off. angle for a dick pic? No, no. <laughs> and, and, and you don't like, have to ask. It just knows, Josh. It just knows. <laughs> Now, people listening to this after the fact with one of those in the room. Capture super high res 3D, 360 degree data, and then you go back in time and pick out what picture you want after the fact. Why do you need 364? Uh, because if you were looking over here, yeah. but the cool boat thing that Alan wanted to see was over on this side and he didn't notice it, now he can notice it. Well, like, there'd be no way. That I could have caught, like... Um, nobody can see what you're yeah, showing. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Doesn't so, matter. We're moving on. This is no longer about SD70. It's going to be fast, guys. This is going to be fast. <laughs> uh, Sapphire shows off a uh, Ryzen V1000 platform for embedded systems. Uh, 5 by 5 I assume, is about the form factor. 5.8 inch by 5.5 inch. Also mm -hmm. posted by uh, Tim over here. Um, this is... Uh, you know, Zen CPU cores, Vega GPU, dual channel DDR4 memory. This is essentially a, a Ryzen APU embedded for any number of applications you might use this for. Um, Look at the size of that die. Yeah. It's nice. It's pretty good. It's nice. It's pretty good. I don't know AMD what nice did means. well. What kind of cooler do you mount is that, on that? Maybe that's a monolithic? Yeah. It's the, yeah. Ryzen, the Ryzen APU. Oh, okay. okay. It's just, yeah. it's, it's just, just one die. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that a laptop memory? I see. Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. dim. Oh yeah, it's so dim. It's, it's only so five dim. inches yeah. across. Okay. I mean, okay. this is embedded stuff that could go in anything from 
Slot what do you need? Machines. To, slot machines is actually like like okay. casino yeah. gambling yeah. is like the most common use case yeah, for, yeah, yeah. I can for see AMD's that. embedded uh, situation. Um, they can drive four 4K monitors. Exactly. Yep. That's a hell of a and slot And you machine. need that if you want to get my attention at the casino. Yeah. They need flashing lights and high resolution with yeah, that sound system yeah, is missing. Exactly. So missing. Uh, so they have anywhere from two core four thread all the way up to four core eight thread comp- uh, versions of this. It's kind of cool. You can get, for four hundred fifty bucks, um, you get that four core eight thread Vega eleven. Yeah. Oh, is that just the base price for the processor, not for this particular board? No. Or is I, that for this no, board? That's no, the board? That's the board, but. These are too expensive for any like actual consumer to try to use in hobbyist stuff. They're, oh, if really? You, if you go down, the Udu Bolt that he links to is like the hobbyist version this of this, guy? essentially, from a company. I think it's like an Indiegogo currently, but... Yeah, Kickstarter. You know. So it's a... Okay, it's a Ryzen embedded V1000 yeah. starting at 2020. But this has like Arduino pinouts, and it's cheaper. Huh. It's still a little pricey, I think, but... But you would use that if you were yeah. trying to... Yeah, that's like the hobbyist level stuff, where the Sapphire stuff is like... Enterprise grade, which is good to see for this type of stuff. They got Cinebench R15 numbers. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I just think that there's probably a lot of... For, for single chip, monolithic, embedded designs like this, you've been relegated to Intel integrated graphics for a long time. If you wanted an embedded something like this with a GPU, your only op- other option would be like the Jetson, Jetson TX2. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, like, I can't I think of any other any, like, single Intel board. Intel didn't make any Nook boards with discrete graphics on no. them. No. They didn't do any of the uh, any of the Cabby Lake G stuff. No. Kind well, of. there is the one Nook, but it's, right. that's not for I would. Embedded. That seems a little bit pricey, too. For that, huh? And it's got one Wi Fi, it looks like slot, and then one yep. M.2, right? Uh, yes, with the short M.2, yes, yeah, stacked on top of each other so you can use both, yeah, one SATA port, huh? Yeah, it's got a lot of nice specs to it, actually. I think that other port one is above the other one, that's what I said, so you can use both, yeah. Yeah, you can yeah, stack them. You use the short one for your Wi-Fi. That's a 2280 on top of a... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make you... Interesting. Excited, no. Alan? Hmm. Storage on top of storage. And on the no. back is storage on top Cats of and dogs wireless. Living together. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Uh, what else we got? Uh, do we have to talk about this RGB... One? Oh, RGB SSDs are finally here. Yeah. Uh, uh. We have a sample of this. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you do. think that's bad, wait till you see my pick. Uh, I believe we forecasted this like three or four years ago. Yes, yeah. Why we don't did. they put LEDs on SSDs? I regret that forecast. Yeah. Ken, yeah. it's not just LEDs. <laughs> they're they're compatible with Aura Sync, Mr. Like, or Mr. Light, RGB Fusion, and Frag Harder Disco Lights. Thank God. They're compatible with all of them. Thank Look, guys, I don't know why you guys are such haters. It is like an eight-channel RGB controller. Yeah, it's, there's like you can make a lot of individual colors. Like on this. It, you go, yeah, you can, you can make do like, a rainbow pattern. Yeah, yeah. it uses the five-volt addressable stuff as opposed to like the twelve-volt stuff, so you can address yeah. each individual LED in the SSD. Yep. Are there cases where the SSD drives are visible, uh, or sure. is this for custom? What there mean, will are be there cases where the what? Well, I mean, it's yeah. kind of cases thing where, where you, you mount them on the back behind the motherboard. You don't even see them through a window. Yeah, yeah. Well, if that one sits like right that, there. As that one. Corsair tempered glass case is it tempered glass on the back too? Yeah, yeah. Where the cable routing is, and, and I, I assume okay. there are SSD yeah, hot swaps well, back. You don't there. always yeah, have to put the SSDs yeah. in like. Yeah, you could just gaff tape it to the front of the window. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, well and there's also a couple of cases where you've got tempered glass on the back as well. Yeah. So you can see the ones that are hidden behind the motherboard tray. Right. Yeah. Which I'm fine with that. Like, I think that, and, and, like, you know, hey, whatever. If it costs $6 to add it, add it. Let the people buy it. Who care? Oh, right? 80 bucks for a 256 gig version? How much? 80 bucks. I mean, that's not. So it's not adding it's, much it's not cost. Bad. To, it's yeah, not that's, bad. That's pretty good. I don't know if it's good SSD or not. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I haven't gone through the results. We have yet. a storage reviewer back in the country, so maybe we, we one do. day we'll find out. We do. We'll find out. I don't know. Let us know if you care about RGB-enabled <laughs> SSDs. I mean, look, Corsair made an RGB chair. 
Yeah. Um, these guys. Did they teams, actually start shipping that? I we saw know. it at CES. I don't I know if they actually. So. I, I, I think they did. Maybe. I think they did. Uh, freaking I know I have to have one. Freaking RGBs. Um, so I don't know what this story is. Captain Undervolt in the RX Vegas 64's Jeremy. Why is Homer Simpson angry? Well, no, he's not angry. He's Look not at angry. him. Just he's just throttling. Short. Oh, I see. You know, yes, it, 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 everybody oh. knows that the the Vegas ah. pull too much the power. Vegas. Everybody knows that if you just lower <laughs> the voltage on that, you'll get the same performance, but the power is going to be so much lower. Oh, yeah. And it'll yep. still be totally stable. Actually, totally I mean, that, that is to a certain extent true. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> truly is. Like if you, well, if you actually go to like OCC, uh, they did some really impressive graphing on uh, watching the power usage and frame rates on a variety of different uh, voltages. So it is, it's fairly impressive. And, you know, honestly, it makes the Vega 64 look pretty nice on some newer games for because you're getting better performance. Like It's not just, oh, I'm saving power and I'm not quite using up quite as much and producing heat. It, it's literally... I'm sustaining higher frequencies for longer than I am yeah. at uh, stock settings, huh. which is good to know. Huh. That is good to know. <sighs> Poor Radeon. I just, just, they need like, I was going to say, they need GPU, a little love. I'm trying to think of something more realistic, right? Like, <laughs> you can't just make this up out of nothing, right? <laughs> They need instead they of need only like, like a twelve what if you put two meter on one PCB. Yeah. They need to announce like a hundred dollar price cut across the board on the high end parts, and work with some partners for like a couple of like new SKUs, new designs, something like that. Send them out for reviews. Get people excited about their damn GPUs anymore because Nvidia is going to have new parts. Andy is going to be sitting there with the same stuff. No, they're gonna they're gonna rebrand it. And you don't you have know, to mortgage your house to afford a new GPU. They're, they're going to rebrand it as the as the just add one digit number to no, the. You can't do that anymore. No, they it's can't. They're going to make the RX Vega sixty five. You know what? I think I think, I think the, like two times ago when they did it, you said they're not going to do that anymore. No, and then they I never did it said again. no. They just don't have a, they don't have enough diversity in their product line to really do that at this point. But yeah. Well, they need to hire a higher diversity officer. And it'll fix everything. <laughs> I think that does the same thing. I Just bring the guy over but... from uh, from HR. Yeah. Uh, you know. All right. Before we get into our picks of the week, let's uh, say thanks to Rebecca Donahy, who has increased her pledge to eleven ninety nine a month. Eleven ninety nine? Isn't that incredible? It is so Thank incredible. You. Thank, Thank you. you. You have to you have to Thank go you. to every side, Josh. Go to left. The that's right, why. That's why everybody the does the ninety nine because they they want the full meal deal. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's like thank you. it's like he was posing for pictures from the whole crowd thank you. every time he said thank you. Me specifically. <laughs> I was I'm so said, glad I, I live in like... a country that abandoned the penny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a hater today. All right. All right, hey. let's get into uh our picks of the week. So I'm gonna go back to the show notes here so I can click on the things that people decided to put in and we'll go here, we'll do this, we got this. A nice link you got there, Ryan. Hey, thank you. I already have mine. I don't need your attitude. Well, it's um, not like I can post to the chat without searching for it. So um, this is a, a Nintendo Switch game that I've picked that was very popular at the 4th of July week event, weekend event that I was at with my friends um, because you can play multiplayer on it with just one copy of the game. Like, Remember what Mario Kart was? It what? Mario Kart that did that? Like, if you have the Switch, it'll just, like, stream out the pieces oh. you need. Yeah. Really? Um, and uh, like it's How quickly, though? Pretty pretty quick. Wow. I mean, it does it once, and then you can yeah, keep yeah. reloading the thing. Uh, it's very fun. If you uh, like Mario Tennis, you're going to like the next Mario Tennis. Okay. I don't like realistic sports games. Uh like, well, so, for example, <laughs> Tiger Woods I liked because uh, you could apply spin to the ball after you'd hit it. Fun, not realistic. Like, yeah. you could change ball flight in air. Whatever. Yeah. Um, Mario Tennis, very good if you happen to have a Switch. Uh, and it turns out there's a lot of good games coming out on the Switch. What else? Oh, yeah, uh, that's only $57. That's true. It's not bad considering you have to buy one copy. Half the price. I mean, yeah, the Switch games are more expensive than I thought they would be in general. But, you know. Uh, 
Fortnite is out on the Switch now too. So it's, it's, it's the only video game. It's the only <laughs> yes, the only video game is now out on Switch. So look at that. Look how intense Mario is there. I mean that's he's focused. That yeah. mustache has come and a long way. He's wide. got five fingers. I, 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 I like four. I like the chain chop in this game that like holds the racket in its mouth. Oh yes, yes. Very good. You're right, Josh. Did Mario always always have? I think no. you're thinking of Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse had four <laughs> fingers. Three. Well, three fingers and a thumb. Oh. Mario has all five fingers here. Yeah. I'll consult the uh, the guidebook, the style guide uh, after the podcast, mm -hmm. just so we're all on the same page. Good plan. All right. Uh, next on the list is um, Jeremy's got RGB crap. Freaking oh. RGB. Thanks to Leanne Lee. This yes. is the coolest. Yes. It, it's it's happened. You thought the SSD was disturbing. No, I'm sorry. You've got RGB power cables. Come on, that's Only awesome. Only forty dollars. They're that, like they're like individual, like one channel per wire. RGB. Oh yeah, look at that. Power cables. Watch, cool. it, watch them dance. That is that is kind of cool. Uh, and it's only for the. If ATX only you had cable, some right? electronic music. Yeah. Or EDM. You know. it's, it's only the ATX cable right now. Right. I, I think that's better. And that's than the, the strimmer, not the rimmer, but the strimmer. It's only forty. I don't want to see the rimmer. So I assume this is just like an extension for yeah, your ATX it cable. It's not yeah. actually requires yeah. you to have a specific power supply or anything. So, well, I need to have one of those now. <laughs> I don't even know why, but I need to have one now. Uh, all right, uh, Josh. Me? Yes, Josh. Yeah, so I got this earlier this week. I actually bought one because I, I, I've been thinking about G Sync. Uh -huh. I, I made some positive financial choices in my life. You've been thinking about G Sync, so you bought a free sync. Pack. And this was one exactly, of them. Exactly, because I can't afford G Sync. Oh. Josh, but you know I do this have won't work with your nine seventies and free sync, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, 970 and FreeSync is just, it's, it's, uh, but the, you know, nice thing, even if you had a 970, you could run it at the 144 hertz oh, refresh sure. rate. Yeah. And when you're up that and high. So you do have some, you know, some positives there. Because, you know, that mouse movement at 144 hertz that is on the nice. desktop. That's really nice. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's amazing how slow sixty hertz feels after you oh. use that. And, and I mean, yeah. honestly, if you get, Ugh, a, if, if you're running a panel at 144, and a game is playing and it's running at like say 60 or something it's really hard to even see the tears because because the refresh rate so fast yeah the refresh rate so yeah. fast the tears are only there for like a third of the frames or a half of the frames yeah right so they show up and they're almost immediately replaced by a solid frame without a tear so yep. yeah. yeah yeah it's uh you know this was on sale when i got it for 159 wow with damn. a 20 dollar okay. steam gift card that's pretty damn good. So also damn it was it was a nice yeah was it sold and, and by it, new egg because this is yeah. uh this is a third party right now no he got it from the tunny anyway i don't know but uh this was a uh you know, it, 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 you when you get it out of the box, you need to work on the color and the brightness and the contrast, and you gotta adjust things. And yeah, that's probably if you've got monitors. a Radeon card, there are a few interesting little things when you turn on FreeSync. Like if you have a cutscene or a static frame or something that you know you're loading into something, you'll get these strange flashes across the uh, the screen. Uh, the eighteen hundred R curvature is. It's not bad. It I it it doesn't annoy me one bit hmm. in either desktop or or in gaming. It's it seems nice. Yeah, as long as and you're so looking at it head on, it's it, you know you don't get any yeah, weird. Yeah, I mean it's it's a VA panel, and so it's not it's not as bright and as kind of colorful as an IPS. Sure, but it does pretty well. It does good with blacks and darks. Um. But the viewing angles are, are pretty good. And, uh, you know, if you've got an AMD card and you want to try FreeSync, this is a relatively inexpensive and pretty good quality product to get it done with. Relatively inexpensive? 150 man. That's like... <laughs> really? Yeah, 150 <laughs> is extremely inexpensive. Uh, but, uh, you know, 212 is relatively That's still good for 144 hertz. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah, and, I, and I, you yeah, said and you were never going to get a new monitor before safe, 2020. Turn... What's that, Jeremy? You said you were never going to get a new monitor before 2020 or so. Yeah. Well, 159 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Some well, 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 it's I almost lied. a buck of hertz. Yeah, lied. pretty much. You're a liar, liar who lies. Ants on fire. Yeah. All right, uh, Alan. I got two. You like this guy's jacket? I got a. I got a. Uh, yeah, the stock photo is is retarded. Look though. at that guy. Um, what a jacket. So there's a thing called mobile passport. If you're out of the country and you come back hey, to the I country, use that. You, did you use it when you used yeah, it? Yeah, when I came back from England, it was it was awesome. Were they you said like, they, were you like go the to, only guy go to using 57. it? I was like, what the hell is 57? And the guy looked at me for about two seconds. He's like. The Portal 57 over there. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was through into the U.S. in, in less than five minutes. Yeah, so this thing's been out so you for... you did get a 57th state, though. Ryan, you were saying this thing's been out for like two years now? At least, at yeah. least. Yeah. Okay, so I came back through through Newark, right which is a... Which is a Newark is a pretty large port of entry as mm-hmm. far as like, you know, just sheer yeah. volume of people coming through that place. Yeah. There was probably like a thousand people standing around in the whole place where they're checking your passports and, you know, your just long lines and everything. And then, like, there was there was a couple of lines for the global entry thing, which you use, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. there were some people in those lines, so like maybe, you know, 10, 15 people in those lines waiting, right? There was a mob in just the I don't have anything, any technology-related thing, like line, right? That was like just a madhouse. And then there was this mobile passport line with nobody in it. Like nobody, still nobody's using this thing. There's so, stories about it. Going yeah, there back were there were two people ahead of me, and there was 150 people in line at the regular place. Right. So you just, I mean, I imagine eventually it'll catch up and it'll be a bit worse or something. I don't know, but like for the time being, holy crap, it just definitely use this. So when somebody told me about it it's a, a couple three years ago. Uh, the app icon looks like this. And it's just called Mobile Passport. It's yeah. not like it looks a TSA shady. app. I was like, I am not taking a picture of my passport and sending it to these yahoos. Yeah, um, that would be my initial DHS. reaction. Yeah. yeah, heck yeah. And I already had global uh, global entry, so I was kind of like, yeah, whatever. Um, but you know, based on Josh's experience and Alan's experience, I'll I have two international trips uh, in the next couple. Well, of months. you shouldn't use it still. You should still use your global entry. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Hey, look, yeah. it's Josh's passport. Yeah, it's not, so, it's not working, but good what job. is global entry? Because so where for, else are you what, entering what you from? There? What is that? Global entry is a is a program where you opt in to give the government your biometric data in order to get through customs quicker. Yeah, ah. not, cust- not just customs, but immigration. Yeah, you both. never have to. You don't talk to a person for immigration. Yeah. You walk up. You just to walk up to a machine. Um, you give it your fingerprints. You scan, scan your, your passport. passport. It says. Uh, say no to these four questions. <laughs> I always yeah. think it's funny because they ask you these four questions about are you sneaking shit in illegally, blah, blah, blah. And there's like, there's check boxes next to all of them, but there's a big button underneath that says no to all. Click. <laughs> yeah. See, that's like, don't even read them, just hit no, yes. And, and they have those questions in this app. Right. So you're also yep. doing that. So instead of having to fill out the card on yep. the plane or whatever, you just put it in here and it generates you a QR code at the end of the process. Right. And then they just scan the QR code yeah. when you're yeah. coming through. So, but then you take that QR code to your immigration person. Yeah. And he just scans it too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Interesting. It. And What's in, the case, thing? in the case of my immigration person, he asks, where are your bags? That and was no. That would be customs. Well, it was both. Immigration doesn't see your bags. Customs. Oh yeah, sees immigration your bags. doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, you, you, it depends you on how much they search you. My bags <laughs> may or may not be on a flight to the United States right now. Seems unlikely. <sighs> Maybe. So is this only no, U.S. citizens or or foreign citizens as well? Because I think it's just it's just U.S. citizens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Sure. I think so. Coming into the U.S. So you're so you're not missing any at any stamps. No, because you're still no, going they still to stamp other your, They still stamp your passport at the first stop that you do. They just, yeah. they no, just don't no, they do don't. anything. They don't stamp your passport coming back into America as American. Not into America, no. <laughs> but oh, you yeah, can't just going into any yeah, other country. I stamped, uh, <laughs> when I left, uh, when I left, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the other one, yeah. uh, All right, which uh, is what I came home to was a non-functioning air conditioner, which was nice considering like last week was like in the nineties. What? Nothing. Go ahead. Go ahead. You guys are like, just, you know. Yeah, go, keep, just keep going. Go on. Anyway, uh, air conditioner wasn't working, right? It uh, wasn't working because the silly capacitor, like, blew and the uh, heat pump. Mm-hmm. There's a capacitor that always just blows. Yeah. You know. Yep. I've replaced mine twice at my house. Yeah. So, uh, 
instead of calling the AC guy and paying the extra charge to have the guy show up after hours, and then you, you know, uh-huh. in the case of the only AC guy that I could find that was going to come out in a reasonable amount of time, uh, charged for like 200 and something dollars for the capacitor. Okay. Uh, yeah, so just buy a spare and just have it. It's kind of like it's kind of like my advice. Keep one so, in your front shirt pocket. Well, at all yeah, times. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far but, because of lightning. That's it, a fair size capacitor. So, so here's the thing. Uh, that so what's capacitor. With this company? So, why, if you, why am I looking? If, at if this? you want to be smart about it, like really smart about it, you would pop the cover off of your heat pump, find out which type is in there, and yeah. order that one as a spare That's, to have. Right. Yes, you should do that. That would be the smart way to go. If you don't, if you don't want to have to be bothered with that, <laughs> you can get Buy this one, one which is sort of like a universal capacitor. It's like five different. Oh, you just plug it into whichever one. You can uh, jumper and you can add capacitance and like. Huh. So if the one you're replacing less safe. Like mine was like a forty-five slash five. So you would take the twenty plus the twenty-five. That gives you forty-five, and then there's, there's a five off to the side. And Interesting. You just, you just use those. Okay. And it's basically like a universal, you know, thing. Look at um, that guy. His hat is nice. If you do want to buy one of those, don't buy it's it. Like off budget like, Al Borland. <laughs> Don't buy it from the company and don't buy it from like Amazon because it's like there's only a couple of sellers and they're trying to gouge right, so people. You're, 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 buy them, no, that's buy them off of eBay. All the places. No, they're like they're like forty five bucks on eBay. All right. But if you if you take the cover off of your heat pump and look for the specific one you have, you can find those for probably like fifteen or twenty bucks. Okay. So, so what you, was your solution? My solution was my wife was not happy and I called the AC guy. Well, you had no air conditioning. Exactly. S- scroll mm-hmm. up to the top again. I did. I did first try to replace uh, said capacitors. Uh, Coat dual, hangers. N- no, I I took the <laughs> I took the motor run capacitors out of my two garage door openers, and uh, tried to put them in series or in line. No, it was uh, there's two ones for the fan and ones for the compressor. It's two capacitors in one usually. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so the the compressor worked just fine, but the fan was not having it. So. And I didn't have any way of finding anything that was going to work, so I just called the guy and, well, hey, and good, ate it. Good on you for trying. My, my favorite part about this is if you go back to the website and the in the header, there's an option for register your turbo. <laughs> Sounds right <laughs> up Alan's alley. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, this is a turbo registration. Where's, 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 where's my supercharger <laughs> registration? <laughs> but se- seriously, though, like it's silly to not have. A spare capacitor for I, your I, heat pump. I, I will. It sounds stupid, but I will agree because, because they will I've, fail. I've had them blow on my on, on my AC unit yeah. twice, and it's it is like for me, it's like always on a Sunday, right? Yeah, and, and they're always going to uh, bore. And this it's not when something it's Home Depot out. stocks. No, Home Depot Lowe's, Lowe's, nobody. Like none of the normal like big the box local guys. guys nothing. It. I even called some other like repair places. And, was just and like, they don't want to sell it to no, you. No, they don't want to sell it yeah. to you. Oh, we have to come out and diagnose your system and yeah. whatever, you know. And yeah. So, and, and and honestly, it's going to break. Because, like, even this unit here that's, like, a high grade and all this, you know, whatever. It's, like, probably one of the highest grade capacitors I've come across, right? Yeah, you that's don't only, think the idea of, like, jumping between different things to create a capacitance no, it's is it's kind not, of a it's fault? it's designed to do it. I understand that, yes. I understand, yes, I get it. It's designed to do it. It doesn't mean it's designed to be as robust as one that is natively built well, for no, capacitance. Well, no, because the materials, the, well, the, that company also makes the individual ones if you want. Like if you want to, you, find you, it, you right? know, it's, it's you know not what's a amazing fine about... Oriental capacitor. But here's my point: uh, <laughs> even even the really highly rated ones, the highest warranty you will find on any of them is five years. Yeah, but when your air conditioning's out, you don't really care about the warranty or oh. the forty dollars. You just want the air conditioning to work. I agree with that too. Yeah. I'm just saying, take take that five year maximum that you can find anywhere on the warranty for that part, like as a testament to it's probably going to fail, like around sure. five years, mm-hmm. right? Like it's just. You know. So what you're saying is I should buy a bunch, and then when people's AC goes out, I should charge them way more money. <laughs> Actually, I did find yep. uh, you, the cheapest price you can get on eBay is a pack of four. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. You so now if I need could. one, you have one, right? Uh, I got a spare for – I had already ordered the correct spare for my unit and then had another – Then you ordered more and spares? Then, and then there was a conversation that was basically, no, we're not waiting until tomorrow for that to show up. Yeah, like you're going yeah, to weird. get this fixed tonight. You know, you know what is best in life? <laughs> what? Not having to own an air conditioning unit for my house. You don't have an air conditioning unit? Oh, no. I agree with that, Josh. It never gets below 12 degrees in Josh's house. Above, Come on, it's or, it's yeah, Wyoming. Above. I'm at I'm at 72 20 feet. 
Oh. No. Yeah. It cools down to, I mean, even if it gets 90 degrees in the day, it cools down to 50 degrees at night. That's, mm-hmm. that's, so you that's open up nice. your windows at night, yeah. you Plus close it snows them in, in the June, morning. So, you know. <laughs> I stayed in a house in Sicily that had no air conditioning. Well, it's it, Sicily, of course it, not. And it was Sicily. And it as was far hot. as I'm concerned, Josh, uh, the world's only getting hotter, so be prepared to need an air conditioning unit in Wyoming before, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, before too long. I have never owned one in my life. Really? Not even a win- in-window air conditioning unit? Nope. He's in Canada. Is it because you He's rent? He's in Vancouver. It's <laughs> barely Canada. Yeah, well, no, but I lived through 20-some years of Ontario where it's like, yeah, next two, three weeks, it's going to be 39, feels like 48 with the humidity. Enjoy. That's why I went to malls. Do you just? I wasn't shopping. I was just hiding or something. Yeah, Yeah. that's fair. He just goes shopping. Yeah. No, not shopping. Just hiding. Go sit in the food court. (laughs) (laughs) You damn right. (laughs) Oh, all right, everybody. None of you you guys have anything on the picks, right? Nope. Back there. All right, that's gonna be it then. That's the end of the podcast. Welcome to five oh six. Not welcome. Goodbye to five oh six. Uh, you can find all the back episodes at pcper.com slash podcast. You can also find links to the stories we talked about today, show notes, RSS feeds to download uh, MP3s or YouTube videos or all the other stuff that you might need or want or desire from our podcast. Uh, you know what the best thing about last week was? No. It was episode 404. 404. No, because we're on 506. No, no. It wasn't no. even a 503 because it was missing. <sighs> but, but you can't have, like we we can't have that joke. We already did that joke at episode 404. I'm sorry, yeah, don't you remember it because it's a hundred episodes it's away. It's been two years. Huh. <laughs> All right. So the time to live was about a hundred. What do you want? Hmm. Fair. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next week.